this is the initial state of uh, my spot welder project. Um, so I've taken the project which I had in my last video, which is a supercapacitor charger. I've made four of them. I've connected them all in series. Uh, so I get 2.7 volts times four, which I think is about 10.8 volts, um, which I'm, I'm going to use uh, to do some spot welding. Uh, there are some updates which I need to make to this project. Um, so this is, I've gone through the design process, got it up and running. Uh, but there are there are some things I need to go back over and, and change. For instance, the, the wires which I'm using to connect all the capacitors together and to go between the, the welder and the capacitors and the welder and the, um, the welding points, uh, that's too thin. So I need to make those thicker and that's very important. So at the minute it's not as efficient as it, as it needs to be. Um, and that's the, the main uh, design change which I need to make. Also, when I use a spot welder, um, as soon as the, the capacitors go below the 2.7 volts, they start to charge immediately, even when the spot welder's in operation. So, and that takes the, the microcontroller here below the, the voltage it needs to run. And so they disappear and come back on again um, after, it's, uh, after the spot welding is finished. So I need an inhi inhibit operation on these charge Board so that when the spot weld is in operation, it stops the uh, supercapacitor from charging uh, whilst the, the, the power is being drained from those capacitors. Uh, and then these uh, microcontrollers will be able to continue to um, display uh, without interruption. So that's as far as the uh, project from last time uh, went. Uh, and now I've added this extra bit, which is a, a spot welder. Uh, and all it, it doesn't do much at all. All it does is it creates a pulse. So when the user presses the button, it will just create a pulse which um, allows all the all, as much power as possible to come through from the capacitors to the welding points. Um, and that's done through um, uh, some MOSFETs. Now I originally started off with one MOSFET, uh, uh, but I, I needed to add more because just the same as the wires are too thin, I like the legs on the MOSFETs. If I, I think I've got one over here. Uh, the wires on the MOSFETs, I mean, they're, they're very very small, so in order to get the power through them, I mean, MOSFET can cope, it, it didn't blow on, it coped fine, uh, but it just limited the amount of current which was going flowing through it, so I've, I've added one and that made a big difference, and then I added, I've added two below, so that's the second thing which I need to change about this. Uh, in the next stage is to uh, rebuild this board, because I've, I've like cobbled some bits on, and it's a bit messy, like this uh, big capacitor here. So this big capacitor, is when 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 the power shorts out because it's uh, allowing all the power to come through for the spot weld. Um, unless I've got a capacitor to keep some power back for this microcontroller here, uh, that display would would go out, and, and this is what generates the pulse. So the pulse would be cut short as well. So that's why I need a, a capacitor there so that it maintains uh, a bit of voltage to run this uh, display and and the micro uh, the microcontroller. So the operation of this board, like I like I said. Um, when the operator presses this button here, uh, the microcontroller generates pulse, which turns on these MOSFETs for the period required period of time. I've got a variable resistor on the end here, which I've connected to a uh, analog to digital port on on the uh, microcontroller here. And uh, as I as I turn the pot, I can change the uh, amount of time that the pulse is. Um, and when I make this more efficient, hopefully I should be able to make the pulses much shorter as well. Uh, the shorter the pulse, the better. Uh, and apart from the microcontroller, there's just one other component really, which is um, a quad op amp, like I've got the capacitor on the um, supercapacitor chargers. Uh, and that generates a, an LED here to, to say when, when it's up to voltage. I can also see on the display when it's up to voltage there. And the microcontroller prevents, when it goes below a certain voltage, below 10 volts, it prevents you from operating the, the system. Uh, because the MOSFETs, they're most efficient at 10, these ones I'm using are most efficient between 10 and 20 volts because that's when they're fully on. If you drop below uh, 10 volts, then they start to restrict the current. And because they restrict the current, they're effectively they're resistors. Uh, and if it drops too far, say, I think about 7 volts, and you try and operate it, the resistance uh, in the MOSFET will actually just uh, generate enough heat to blow the MOSFET. So it needs to be operated at about 10 volts. So as well as the op amp uh, supplying the analog to digital converter from the this pot for adjusting the time, uh, it also uh, lights this LED to show when the power's up and also um, provides a voltage follower for measuring the voltage of, of the line. And this supercapacitor is charged for a diode so that 
when it's charged and, and the, it's in operation, the power won't automatically go back through and discharge this capacitor, so that, that diode blocks it from power from coming back and, and being drained by the operation of the system. And then there's this last board, and it's just a switch on a piece of ferro board with a couple of uh, copper wires down the bottom, which I use as electrodes to do the actual spot welding. And there's a little LED here, and if, if I press it, you see it operating. In operation, that shouldn't light up because effectively it's a short on the end, so there shouldn't be enough voltage across that LED in operation for that to light up whilst it's actually uh, doing the weld. So I'm coming close to uh, do a little demonstration of the, the spot welding. Uh, I've got a couple of pieces of nickel strip which I'll try and spot weld together. So make sure that both uh, electrodes are pressing on the nickel. And I'll put them together. And I can't, oh, I can just pull, pull those apart but it tears a nickel strip when I do. So that's a good, good weld because in order to pull, the, pull them apart I needed to uh, rip the nickel strip behind. So this is the MOSFET which I'm using for the uh, for the spot welder, um, and it can take a maximum of 75 volts from a drain to source. Well, I'm only uh, doing about 10.5 volts or 10.8 volts maybe, uh, so that's fine. Uh, maximum internal resistance of the MOSFET is 9 milliamps, uh, so that's virtually nothing. So uh, so it shouldn't be at all restrictive. Uh, and the maximum drain current is 80 amps. Um, I'm not. I haven't got anything which will measure current that high, so I don't know how much current I'm I'm dra draining, and um, I don't know how much I'm going to be um, doing when I put the um, the bigger leads in. Uh, so should hopefully hopefully be okay. I'm going to have six of these in parallel, um, so it should be roughly six times that, uh, maybe a bit less. Um, because um, distribution between the MOSFETs isn't always even. So maybe five times, if I'm using six MOSFETs, say five times uh, 80. So it should be uh, should be fine, I think, because um, I haven't had any issues so far. Uh, I really need to make something which will, uh, which will measure the current. Um, I've got some shunts, which hopefully one uh, at some point I'll be able to make something to measure high currents on. Um, and the watts... Uh, the other the only other thing really is the watts per device is 140 watts maximum power dis dissipation. Um, so if I was pulling the full 80 um, 80 amps at 10 volts, that would be eight, 800 watts. Um, and I think six times 140 uh, is around around that kind of thing. But I sh I should be well below that. Hopefully, um, it shouldn't be as as high as that. Um, so that's that's the MOSFET which I'm using. So this is the uh, circuit diagram of the the welder part of the uh, project. Um, I'll just walk through it. Um, I've got a fuse in here. There isn't actually a fuse in the circuit at the minute. I'm not sure whether or not I'll actually put a fuse in ultimately. Uh, that's just there to, as a placeholder to remind me. Um, here's the diode which allows um, from the 10 volt line which is here uh, the uh, the caster over here, I've just drawn it over here because of the, the way that things are uh, like squashed together in this circuit diagram. Uh, it charges that capacitor up with 10.4 volts, which it can use to supply the OLED display uh, and the uh, microcontroller with the voltage it requires whilst welding is going on. Um, but I have a 5 volt regulator here because because the OLED display and the um, microcontroller run off of 5 volts. Uh, but I'm using the, the 10 volts to just display a green LED to show the power is present. Um, and I've got just normal decoupling capacitors for the um, for the voltage regulator. Uh, and then we come into an op amp here. And this is just like on the uh, charging circuit for the for the super capacitors. Uh, and this just, I can set a, a voltage at which the yellow LED comes on. So the yellow LED comes on when the voltage uh, is above 10 volts, which is like the safe uh, voltage to drive the MOSFETs at. That's just an indicator. I've noticed that I've got a MOSFET in here. I don't actually need that in this circuit. It was in the supercapacitor charging circuit because I was operating uh, at voltages uh, which were too low to drive really an LED directly. Uh, but on this one, I can actually drive the LED directly from the 
or pamp so I'll probably I'll, I'll remove this, this this MOSFET here I have to remember to do that and then coming up to the top of the circuit up here this is your pamp which I use um, here's a variable resistor on the input to it uh, and that just feeds the ATD converter or one of them on the microcontroller to set the um, so like a user setting to set the type the pulse width uh, so the user can set the pulse width of, of the welding and then this op amp over here is just a voltage follower and it feeds off of the 10 volt line although actually on my circuit I think it feeds off of this 10 volt line down here which is held steady with this capacitor there uh, so I need to remember to update this circuit diagram to to show exactly what uh, which line it does um, actually represent uh, because this line here when you're welding it drops down to very low voltage because uh, it's basically a short so it's actually much better to actually display the line which is more constant whilst whilst is in the welding period even though the welding period is very very slow uh, very short sorry um, so if I scroll across to the right hand side of the diagram it's got the OLED display there and actually you don't you wouldn't need and I've got a microcontroller down here but you don't you probably don't really need the microcontroller and the OLED display I just use them to display the voltage and set the pulse width but you could use a, a 555 timer in fact the spot welder itself could literally just be a 555 timer with a variable resistor on it to set the pulse width and a button to trigger it uh, but it's, it's quite nice to have a microcontroller and display and also the microcontroller it because it knows what the voltage current voltage is it can prevent uh, any welding going on uh, when the voltage is if the voltage was, was below a safe value uh, so if it goes below 10 volts like I, and someone presses this weld button the microcontroller won't let the weld the weld happen um, and although you could actually actually do implement that with a 555 timer as well you could have some kind of logic in there which prevented it being in operation if the voltage was too low um, and then there's just the last bit which is uh, these are the MOSFETs. So currently on this circuit diagram, I'm only showing two, but really I'm going to have, I think about six probably, just so that the uh, current can get through all the pins. Um, so there's enough surface area of metal on the pins to push that amount of current through them. Uh, and this op amp here, uh, th this is, it could be a transistor here, but because I've got a quad op amp pack, and I've got an op amp spare. So, so I use an op amp to take the five volts from the, um, GPI line of the microcontroller and convert it into the 10 volts here which is needed to actually drive the um, MOSFETs into their into their gate uh, so that that just means that rather than add a transistor I can just use an op amp uh, and it and it converts the 5 volts to the 10 volts and then I've got this little LED here the red one uh, that's that's quite handy because first of all I can check whether or not if I, if I'm not actually in contact with metal, I can press the button and make sure that the that the operation of the welding instrument works because of that red LED flash. But also, if I'm actually trying to weld and I haven't got proper contact with the metal, then that LED will flash as well. Um, so it's a good indicator that you're not you don't have proper contact if you're trying to weld and and you're not getting a proper weld. Uh, and then this is just like that's the uh, output for the for the welding probes. Uh, I need to make a better welding probes as well. I mean, I'm just using a couple of pieces of copper wire. I really need something uh, which will get the current to the welding points a lot, lot more efficiently. But that's a, an overview of the circuit.